All right, so in this video, let's try to download a file using Node.js. So I'm gonna use just Node.js built-in modules, nothing extra fancy we're gonna be adding to this. So I'm just gonna create a JavaScript file here. And we'll try to download a file to this folder. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get the URL of the file we need to download. So basically a link to the file that needs to be downloaded. So as an example, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to pexels.com. See, I searched for some pictures of Chicago and here we can just click on one of these. And if I go under download, see, we should be able to download. Now, main things we need to remember about these downloads is that downloads are taking time. So depending on how large, whatever you're trying to download is, it may take a second, 15 seconds, a minute, 15 minutes sometimes, who knows? And that's the main thing we need to understand about downloads is when you try to download something, it's not like the whole file just all of a sudden appears in your computer. It's being downloaded in pieces. So basically we're getting pieces of bytes and we're piecing all those bytes together. And once that whole thing is complete and we get all the bytes, then we piece together the file and that's the final file. So this is the reason when you click on download, you will usually get something like this. It will start downloading and then you'll get something like the, see that happened really fast for me. You get this progress bar if you have a larger file and you basically wait until it's done. And once it's done, you have the file. So I'm gonna try to do this using Node.js. So first of all, let's try to get a link to this image. And I'm just gonna go here and paste it as the URL. I'm gonna remove all this extra stuff. We don't need just the link to the file itself. So we need a few packages here. So we're gonna start by importing them. Not packages, modules. So these are built-in modules. We don't need to install them. We just have to make sure we require them so we can use them. So one of them is gonna be HTTPS, so we can do requests. And the other one is gonna be FS, so we can write files to our file system. So below here, we're gonna do the actual downloading part. What we need to do first, we need to basically do a request to this link. And we're gonna do it using this package HTTPS. And on this, we have this get method. And that accepts a URL as the first argument which we have on top there. And the second argument is the function as a callback function. And this function is gonna accept the response. Now this response in our case, because we're downloading something, it's gonna take some time. So it has this pipe method. And what it allows you to do, it allows us to basically just channel pipe that information that we're getting from this request to this writable stream. Now to create that writable stream, we're gonna use this fs import here. So I'm gonna create a new variable here and see that fs has this create write stream. And that is going to accept the path and the name of the file. So if you were trying to do like some directory, some other directory, some other directory and the name of the file. This is what you would do, or we can use the path module to do this better. For now, I'm just trying to write that to the same directory where I'm located over here. So I'm just gonna type the name of the file. It doesn't have to match this file name, but it does have to have the same extension if you want to be able to open this. So I'm just gonna call this photo.jpg. So we're gonna store that in this file stream. We're opening that stream so we can get that information. Remember, we're getting those pieces and we're basically putting those pieces in this file stream. So this is where we're gonna pipe that. So we wanna at some point know that we're done downloading so we can close this file stream. So our file system knows that that file is done. To do this, we're gonna take that file stream variable and on that, we're gonna have this on method. 
And this is gonna accept an event as the first argument, very similar to something like when you do something with the UI, when you click on a button, you say do something. This is similar, so our case, the event is gonna be finish. So when we finish downloading that file or piping that file, whatever we're gonna say in this case, then we're gonna do this callback function. And what we want to do once that's done, we want to make sure we close that file stream so it knows that it's done. So let's try to run this file and see what happens. So that's the name of the file. So I'm gonna go here and do node space and the name of the file and hit enter. So it took a little bit. So you can see photo JPEG file is here. Let's try to open it. See, we have the file here. Pretty large file, but anyways, so that's the file. So let's try to do a couple of improvements here. So we want to try to check for some errors. So one of the errors I want to check is on this file stream, if there's some sort of error. So again, we're gonna hook to some of those events. So I'm gonna do another one on this on and see, we do all these different things. So in this case, I'm gonna use the error and that is going to again, accept a callback function, which should have the error. And let's just console lock that error in case there is an error. And we could also do like a secondary message here. Let's do it on a separate line. Now, another one I wanna check is errors on this request itself, this HTTPS request. And we should be able to do it a couple of ways. We should be able to save this request in a variable and then do on on that, or we should be able to also just go directly on that function. And if we do dot, we're probably gonna get some methods on this. I am going to save it in a variable probably here and then we'll use this variable req and see there is this on again. And this again has its own events. So I'm gonna check for the error on the request. Again, it's gonna be some sort of callback function. And we'll just log the error. So that's that. So the next thing I want to do, I want to be able to grab the name of the file from here, from this URL, and just basically just use that name of the file instead of having my file name with extension. And we should be able to do that by importing another package here. And this one is gonna be path. So this path has this base name which if we just pass this URL to this, let me just comment this for a second here. And let's just try to save this in a variable and console log it. So if I go back and run this, see it gets us the name of the file with the extension from this link. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna uncomment all of this and pass the file name over here, just like that. Now let's convert this to a function. Move all of that over here. So this function is gonna accept the URL. It needs to download right here and then we'll get the name and all of the stuff. That will be the name of the function. Now, if we're trying to call the function, then we should be able to just do this. Let's get rid of that. So that's our function. This is where we're calling it. Let's delete this and try to run this. So there's the file. Let's try to go get a different file. Now, 
Now I have two of them. I'm probably going to leave both of them. Let's delete this. Let's try to run. So both of them are done. This is one. This is the other. Both are now downloaded. We may want to introduce some sort of callback to this. So maybe we want to do something after this download is done. So we'll just basically just accept a second parameter here. Callback. And then we want to do that after it's done downloading. So that would be after the finish over here. So we should be able to pass that probably directly to this close right here to say what we want to happen. If it's null, nothing is going to happen. If there's a callback, it will fire the callback. So right now, if I just save this and rerun it, it should pretty much do the same thing. Let's just delete this files so we can see what's happening. Otherwise, it's just going to override them and we're not going to know. So done. So now we have our files, should be the same thing. Now, if we wanted to fire something after it's done, now we have the second parameter where we can do a callback function. Something like this. So now if I rerun this after this is done, it should fire this callback function and it should do this console log. And see done and then after done, we get this message and then done again. So just one more thing here. Let's just remove this file and let's try to rerun this. So I want you to pay attention that done is happening before this over here, even though see this line appears after this. And this is why we want this after this is closed, we want to fire the callback. All right, let's delete this file. So the last thing I want to try to do here, I want to be able to pass some arguments to this callback. So basically when we get this function callback, I want to be able to get maybe the file name here as the argument or something. So we need to somehow when this is done and it's closed, then we need to do the callback. So instead of doing the callback here, what I'll try to do, I'll just do another on. And this time I'm going to go to close event, which is going to happen when we close the stream. And here I'm going to do another function callback. And in this callback, I will simply just do this callback function. And I will pass the file name to the callback function, this file name. So with that, if I go back, save this and go back to this, we should be able to get the name of the file. I'll just call it FN for file name. Let's just try to just console log the file name after the download is done. So that way we'll know that we have the file. So I'm just gonna run this, let's see what happens. So we got an error, console log file. Oh, I did file name. This should be FN. All right, let's save this and delete this one more time. So see now it's done. And then we got the file name as a return because we have the file name after we close the stream. So that should create our function. So another thing that could be worthwhile to add is to check if the file with that name already exists in the folder. 
Maybe don't overwrite the file and give the file a different name, something like that. But this should give you the base, how we can take the URL and use it to download a file. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.